JFT, just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's daily market review for November the 2nd. I am Harlambos Pissuros, head of research here at JFT, and I will talk about yesterday's mini market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events, and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's uh, read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded mixed against the other major currencies on Monday and during the Asian session Tuesday. It lost ground against uh, CHF, uh, the yen and the euro, while it decked out some gains versus uh, the Aussie and the pound. The greenback was found virtually uh, relatively unchanged, let's say, against the Kiwi and the Canadian dollar. Now, the fact that the main gainers were the traditional safe havens, yen and franc, Combined with the fact that uh, none of the risk-linked uh, currencies managed to record uh, any gains, uh, suggests that uh, markets may have traded in a risk-off environment. However, looking at the performance in the equity world, we see that this was not the case, at least during the EU and US session. Major indices in Europe and the US were a sea of green, with all three of Wall Street's uh, main, uh, main indices hitting uh, uh, hitting fresh record highs. However, market sentiment indeed softened during the Asian session uh, today, with only South Korea's KEO SPI reco uh, recording uh, gains. Now, in our view, market sentiment continues to be relatively supported. Uh, despite the softening during the Asian session, uh, lately we uh, we saw we saw market sentiment uh, being supported. Uh, most major uh, indices around the globe have been ha have reversed and have been trending higher again. And this may be due to signs that the latest, the latest supply shortages around the globe may have not affected the economic activity as many may have believed. That said, we expect a more careful and cautious trading today and tomorrow as investors will be biting their nails in anticipation of uh, the, the FOMC indecision. The financial community broadly ex uh, expects the committee to announce the beginning of its tapering process with a pace of $20 billion uh, per month. So, if officials indeed decide to proceed with the expected move, all the, all the attention may fall on the accompanying statement excuse me, and Chair Powell's uh, conference uh, for inflation comments and any potential hints on interest rates. According to the Fed Fund Futures, market participants believe that uh, policymakers will hit the hike button at some point in the middle of uh, next year, so anything pointing to a later uh, timing may come as a disappointment. Now, speaking about central banks, uh, we already had uh, one decision today. This was uh, from the RBA. The bank uh, maintained its, uh, its core policies, meaning interest rates and quantitative easing unchanged, but decided to discontinue the, um, the 10 base points uh, April 2024 yield target, something that was obvious after they failed to defend that level uh, last week. They also abandoned uh, the forward guidance that interest rates are most likely to stay unchanged at least until 2024 and suggested that this could, ha this could happen in 2023. The board will not increase the cash rate until actual inflation is sustainably within the 2-3% to target range, they said, and added that the central forecast is uh, being for inflation uh, is being for inflation to to be no higher than 2.5% at the end of uh, 2023. 
At the press conference following the decision, Governor Lowe confirmed the, confirmed the, the view, clearly saying that it is now plausible for, rate, uh, for a rate hike to be appropriate in 2023, but that doesn't make it certain that interest rates will be raised uh, before 2024. He also added that the uh, latest data and forecasts do not warrant an increase in, ca in the cash rate uh, in, uh, in, 2000, in 2022. So, remember that coming into the meeting, the financial world has been anticipating interest rates uh, to hit 1.25% by the end of next year. So, although more hoggish than previously, the RBA's new guidance was uh, still behind that curve. In our view, that's why the Aussie uh, has fell sharply after the announcement. Remember that yesterday we already noted that market pricing appeared very aggressive, something that put the bar for a disappointment very low. According to the ASX Interbank Cash Rate Futures Yield Curve, market participants still expect some hikes next year, with the December yield now standing at 1%. In our view, this suggests that there is ample room for, uh, uh, for more downside uh, in the Aussie. If central bank commentary and upcoming data confirm the view that no hikes are appropriate next year, those expectations could continue being pushed back, something that could result in more Aussie selling. Now, with the RBNZ being among, among uh, the most uh, hoggish uh, major central banks, we would expect Aussie Kiwi to continue underperforming. Remember that the RBNZ has already pushed the hike button and hinted that uh, more hikes may be in the works for the months to come. So, in the Aussie Kiwi pair, which consists of two risk-linked currencies, any response to developments surrounding the broader market sentiment will be offset, and the main driver may be monetary policy divergence. Tonight we get a New Zealand's employment report for the third quarter and these numbers could strengthen the case for more hikes by the RBNZ soon and thereby uh, increase the buying interest uh, for the Kiwi. Now as for the rest of uh, today's events, we already got Switzerland CPI but uh, most of the time, but as it is always the case, it is, uh, excuse me, but as it is the case most of the times, the franc barely uh, responded uh, to this report. In a while, we get Eurozone's final manufacturing PMI for October, which is once again expected to confirm its preliminary estimate. With regards to the energy market, we have the American Petroleum Institute weekly report on crude oil inventories, for which no forecast is available. As for the speakers, we will get to hear from ECB Supervisory Board uh, Chair Andrea Enria. So, that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at uh, 8 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the, in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT just fair and direct.